people from five different countries. Nepalis, Indonesian, Vietnamese, Bangladesh, and Myanmar. And their SOPs have five different languages. And this is a true story, you know, brother. <laughs> so that particular morning, one bang, uh, I wouldn't say, sorry, I didn't pick on you, this is real. Huh? One Bangladeshi didn't come out to work because he was sick. Like any other normal human being, he just get sick. Here comes the head of production. Late, no worker, who do I have? Look around, you, come here. Have welding in spirit, right? Yes. I mean, I don't know whether he even understand when he say yes. Come, do the welding. So he welds. So as he looks, looks good, he goes away. He doesn't have the skill and the qualification to weld the critical parts. He weld, we see, it comes to the factory, our inspector, they know the bidding is correct, put it through. And you know, 4,375 parts, how it, it, it's impossible for to inspect 100% of the parts. Nobody does it in the world. But what happened, that particular welding process was not done properly, it cracks under stress. Who is to be blamed? Mr. Bangladeshi. <laughs> no, it's about process control. And we advocate to our dealers and our vendors that you are given the task to manage quality process. And that is done by all global OEM. We have to have the trust. Because we give you a contract, we give you the education, we give you the capability, you please give us. So vendors do supporting people, and just like the global Toyotas, Hondas of the world, when that happened, what do we do? We have a recall. And that problem, as you know, happens to everyone. So Proton is no different. Maybe the level of issues that we have are more compounded, and 60% of our vendors are employing foreign labors. And that's a fact. That's just a national issue today about labor shortage. So those are the complexity that you need to understand when you talk about dealing in the automotive industry. Now, how frequent does a new car out on production line? I have a screen in my office, and I get shiver when I see a red alarm in the control system. How many cars, how frequent does a new car come out from production line? Anyone? Hour? How many minutes? I don't know. Anyone? Mr. Bangladesh. Thousand what? No, how frequent? A cycle of minutes or hours or whatever the case may be. Huh? Six seconds. <laughs> hey, brother, where you come from? Uh? I really want to know. Six seconds. A car. You're talking about this little tiny car? I'm talking about this big car, you know. Four wheels with 3,000 components. <laughs> Three minutes. Anybody else? 45 minutes. <laughs> 98 seconds. Ah, oh, wow. That's normally the expression that I get. The best in class is about 45 to 50 seconds. Where you produce only one car and it's all robots. If you go to the Volkswagen plant in Wurzburg, you go to the body shop, you stand in the gallery, you hardly see any human being. It's all robots. And they produce about 45, one car in every 45 seconds. You go to Proton Gallery, you see half robot, you see half human beings. And that's why you get 98 seconds. That's the level of quality that you get. We can invest, but we need scale. So I hope I've given you a simple education here about what the automotive industry is. Right? Before I go to my next step about how is it that we go into China and other parts of the world. Now, now, why we are going overseas? This is, I mean, there must be a need. We know the market is saturated here in Malaysia, as I've said, which means what? The scale is very small for us to have to survive. It's very uncompetitive. The ecosystem, the vendor, overcapacity and efficient, our benchmark cost of index in manufacturing, if in Thailand is one, we are about 1.1. We are 10% more expensive. In China, we are about 15 to 20% more expensive. 
investment are substantial. It's a very capital intensive investment. And obviously, the more we want to produce, the more talent that we need. And really, the issue today in the company and the board is always monitoring is about execution capability. So we need to really harness all the talents that we have both internally and you know, in Malaysia. Excellent challenges, liberalized market, small, and it becomes more and more competitive. We are fighting globally in our own market today. Malaysia is very easy. You know, you go to China, you want to go to China, you have to go to six months of testing. That's what our cast has to go, six months of elaborate testing. Unfortunately, in Malaysia, I've already said this many times, I'll say it again, we are so easy in improving cars coming to our country. And it's not right. And that's why we're trying to push the government to put legislation in place to make sure cars are tested and to be safe. You've seen many cars today that you go into an accident, it's, it's a mangle of metal. And that needs to be tested properly. And we do not want Malaysia to be a dumping ground and all our cars pass the standard test for our Malaysian market and also for global market. And obviously, competition is very stiff uh, and regulatory requirement, particularly the environment, the CO2, and you know the Malaysian government also is pushing for CO2 and so on. So because of this, we have to reinvent ourselves. And how do we do it? We want to be where we are today, and inshallah, God willing, in 2020, we want to be sustainable, and we do not want to be in Asia anymore. In, in Malaysia, just, we want to be in AMLO, which is the ASEAN multi-local OEM. Regionally strong, and having our brand present in four dominant countries. What are those countries? We want to develop what we call hub. Venture into high growth regional markets. Target ASEAN is now a domestic market, China, India, and the Middle East and North Africa. And we want to maximize whatever trade linkages, cultural values that we have within OIC, within AFTA, within bilateral relationship, within country to country, B2B, to make sure that the relationship foster. What are the other strategies? Product competitiveness. We need to make sure our products are competitive. Market driven rather than product driven. I mean, the people, the marketers have to drive the product rather than the people in the styling. We need to have new efficiency, new engine, for example, you know, that emits CO2. We need to streamline and optimize our platform strategy rather than invest in many platforms. We now have to establish production hub. Today, why we are not so successful in our global market, even though we are in 26 countries, because we are exporting out of Malaysia. What we hope to achieve today, we have our base in China, which I will go to, and in India, when China one day, inshallah, we hope by end of next year, 2013, will be producing our left-hand drive version in China and exporting out of China. And because China is such a big market, 1.4, 1.5 million cars a month, and we only have about 550,000 cars a year. So the scale is big. And it's only right and it's only wise for us to go to China. How are we going to do this? We're going to optimize our plan that we have today and optimize the plan that the partner has. Sorry. We need to also do cost reduction, OEM collaboration. Today, as Shah has said, choosing a partner is very key. You need to have a partnership of equal respect. There have been many suitors in the past. I'm sure you have read plenty of news in the public domain about Protoni Disunting. And we're not that unattractive or bright, you know, mind you, you know. But when you are courting, just like what Shah said, before you get married and make someone pregnant, you must like whoever you're dealing with. And there must be some mutual respect. And takkan nak pergi, nak menuh, nak kata, you know, have a partner today that is too big than you and all he wants is what you have and the moment we get married and you become non-existent. And that's why the negotiations in the past have broken down. I am given the role and the trust by the government to say Proto must prevail. The brand must prevail, not only in Malaysia, and the brand must prevail globally. And any company that doesn't allow us to grow will not be a partner of choice. It's as simple as that. And that's why it takes time. But I can assure you, discussion on ongoing, despite whatever you heard in the, in, the, in the press, there are interested parties. But it's a question of how we posture and our position ourselves. Kalau kita ni tunjuk kita ni lemah, tak ada daya, nak ditunggu, diselamatkan dan sebagainya, sudah tentu. Obviously, people will kind of just grab us and gulp us and dictate. But we posture ourselves to be confident, 
company that have strength, they have capability, and know exactly what we want, I think the level of posturing and acceptance will be different. It's a question of choice. We took the route, and that's what we were told by the government and our shareholders, and it's exactly what we do. Obviously, in any industry, there will be obstacles and there will be challenges. It's a question of how you adapt and how agile you are in quickly reacting to the market, and exactly what we're doing. And we're taking a different approach. Breeding bridges, I mean, of course, branding, and that's why you see we are going to motorsports, you know, indirectly to Lotus in Formula One. And you've seen, you know, in the last Asian Pacific Rally Championship, we were, the, you know, we won all seven titles in Asia Pacific, you know, and no other company has done this before. Shows the point, proves the point that the cars that you drive today, whether you like it or not, are a car that's built stable, safe enough to win global rally competition. And that's what, you remember, the, you know, the rally Dakar when Mitsubishi Fuso won, Subaru, four-wheel drive, and that's what branding is all about. So we are only into our second year. And inshallah, we'll continue to do this. And by March next year, I would like to promote in Glen Mary, for those who like motorsport, come to what we call the House of R3, a dedicated showroom that shows and sells all our motorsport activities. It will be open, inshallah, in March. And I advise you and come in Glen Mary. I can assure you, you will have experience coming to the showroom. Now, so. What, to do that, we have to change our approach. And we have invested about 140 million ringgit in systems because we want to be market-driven. And just like I said before, we're not going to build cars and design cars in Malaysia anymore. We're going to send out people to the public domain to go out to China. We have about eight people, nine people that goes to China on a permanent basis. We have people going back and forth in India. We have an office in Iran and come back. So you have to understand. And I, obviously, as a, the MD, as the, we need to go and live and talk to the people and understand, you know, and it's very interesting, I mean, to go and see complexity with the culture and all of them must accept only one car, the same car to all, with minor modifications. Now, let's go about China. I want to focus a lot about China. I think Shah taught you about India. Why is it that we established the strategy? The intent is, of us to go into a market entry. We have two choices in China. To go on a manufacturing license in China today, you have to invest about 1.2 billion ringgit, nothing less. And then you need to go to about three years of approval process, and that's even no guarantee. So we take a different approach. We subscribe to what you call an asset-like approach, where we go and participate and collaborate with partners that already have existing capacity, rather than investing capacity alone. So I think the risk of entry will be much less and we can you know, manage and minimize the investment in putting in the country. That gives us a time to learn and so on. We set up JV with a local partner and product development vendor component. And obviously, we have today what we call the existing operation between young men to do security supply and, and so on. Oh, boy, OK. Now, let's go to China. China today, by far, you know, is the ten largest, you know, is the largest automotive market in the world by far. Phenomenal. I mean, you go to Shanghai Motor Show, it's amazing. Everything in the car, and it takes days to just finish looking at the car. But there's only one country in the world where you walk around the aisle, on the left side, you see the original OEM. And you go on the right side, the copy OEM. <laughs> and it happens in open market. And people accept. And so how you, China is very unique. Okay? And you understand the, the market dynamics, and you have to manage and control to make sure you mitigate the risk. Price war is, uh, is an issue. And obviously, today, the government of China, my understanding, will pass the legislation to go green in the next five years by January 2012. This is the complexity of China. Everybody is there, and hopefully, one day, inshallah, by next year. I mean, we are there already. We have an operation, but it's not our brand. It's our partner's brand. And you see, everybody's in line. Everybody's connected. They are the, what we call the big four, the second four, and the rest of the pack. So you need to pick the right partner. And unfortunately, in China, you know, you think that you have the right partner. It's not what you, you know, again, sometimes it's what you know, and sometimes it's about who you know. And decisions are made in many levels, provincial government, district, and more important, Beijing. These are the number of cars. I mean, 99, 90 models are just in one year. Mind-boggling. They say in China, anything you can produce, people will buy. There's a waiting list. The growth is too big. And this is only what? 
Only a fraction of the population in China is buying. Can you imagine in the next five, ten years when the GP goes up, people in the outskirts will start wanting to buy cars. Obviously, people buy good brands, people buy the lower brands. Now, the benefit for us is very simple. I mean, number one, income source, you know, the revenue for the group. Scale is very important. We want to collaborate with our partner to get a better scale. Product development costs can be short, can be shared to reduce and bring the product cost down, expansion opportunities to bring our suppliers to, and tap into a low cost competitive base, about 15 to 20% lower, and that's a left hand drive market. I mean, that's very key. We take everyone and say China is the right place to go. And how to enter China market? I think there are very fundamental principles that you have to advocate, and it's not very easy. I'm sure you've met many other CEOs and com Malaysian companies that have suffered in the past. We don't want to repeat the same mistake. Today, we have not invested a single cent in China, yet we are getting revenues. And that's, I think, the way to mitigate risk by getting volume. You either call, you know, form a local partnership, and allow the China to take majority, or you can form what we call a technical JV, where you transfer technology, or you invest in green technology. The government is pushing very hard. And today, a lot more of the JV are being pushed outside of the mainstream cities. I think Shanghai and Beijing itself are getting more, you know, bigger, Shenzhen, Tianjin. People are asking people to go out. And the partner that we're working today, you know, Hua Chai, um, is at a factory in Indian Mongolia. It's about two and a half, two hours flight from Beijing. And it is the richest province in China. Number one in gold reserve, number one in oil reserve, number one in gas reserve. And it is, in the city of Eldor, there's about 50,000 people whose income is wealth is more than 50 million ringgit. So all I need to do is every one of them buy two cars, we okay. You get 100,000. Now, key issues, just to echo what you know, Shah said, simply because there must be political leverage. I think it's, we just had our lawyers today. We had an issue with our previous partner. I mean, this is not during my time, a dispute. It's mind-boggling the level of court and legal system that they have there. And no matter how many lawyers I meet, I don't get always the right answer. It's very complex. And we just have to sit down and persevere and be patient enough to look and understand and obviously use the government influence to some extent. And every time I go and we go in a company, in a country, the first door that we knock is the door of the Malaysian ambassador in the country. That always is a standard SOP. And I will never go into any capital city not having dinner with the ambassador because it's very important. Government relations and support is very key. Foreign matters, fine, lacks of transparency. It's very true. People complain about Malaysia, but we have better systems today. But in China, it's even more complex. You go to the same center, same people you meet, and different day, they will give you a different answer. So you, you just have to go by gut feel sometimes, go by experience, talk to other people, and take some luck. But as long as you understand the risk, you mitigate and not over-invest and over-commit, I think you'll be all right. And we have to commit. They are obsessed in getting an R&D. You know the story in China, you give a Boeing, in one week, they will come up with a Boeing copy. Yeah? You give a military aircraft, the stealth, you come up with a copy. An engine can be done a copy within two days, people say. So you need to go, give a little, take a little. Don't give all. I mean, you go all open and say, take, they will take and then just, bye-bye. So, but they're hungry because they believe in R&D. And you are amazing, Chinese engineers are very smart. Don't be fooled when they just look at the simple, somber look and stupid look. They are looking in every area that you do, and they are very particular because they have to survive. 1.4 billion people, you imagine only the best of breeds are able to work in global OEMs, and they are the best in class. And don't be, you know, you know being fooled by the meager appearance, you know, because they are watching everything that you make, and their job is to understand. Now, how is our approach? We take a very cautious approach. We had a choice about five years ago, go with a big bang. And you know, at that point in time, our reserves are not very big. We want to go and do what we call phase approach. We work with a partner, we give them the technology. Now we are then perceived as a technology provider. Rather than go with a global brand and invest in big marketing dollars, and we have no chance and no clue whether we're going to succeed. Rather than take the risk, we advocate, be a technology provider, and try trying to build a local brand. So we worked with this company called Young Men. I mean, uh, and he started from a bus building. He's the biggest, what we call, luxury bus producer in China. He's now supplying bus even to Europe. 
he had now wanted to go and venture to automotive, I mean a passenger car. We have a platform, we work together with Lotus, and today our cars are sold. Having understand that, that's about four years' journey, I can tell you we have a lot of fights. We go, we have an office in Hangzhou, we have a lot of meetings, you walk away the meeting, you sign your hand, tomorrow the goalposts change. That's China. And this is talking to the chairman himself. Not because he wants to fool you, he doesn't understand international business. So it's a series of education, and I said we educate the people there, we also educate ourselves. And I find it very enriching going to meet and say, look, I come on a better person, a better person today coming out from a meeting because now I understand what human internet, human personal skills is all about to the maximum. So do not think you carry you know, a hard degree here in Malaysia, you know, you ain't going to work. That's the truth. You need to advocate a different approach going to China, and that applies to many countries. So today, after having the experience of a young man, we know what needs to be done, we're going to the next step. We are forming a joint venture, the, the MOU was signed in front of the Prime Minister, and inshallah by January, we'll form this joint venture with a company, not to do manufacturing, but to do R&D and product development, and they will assemble our cars. And the partner is Watai. So limited operation, we had to familiarize the domestic market, anticipate political you know, evolution, understand product familiarities, you know, we have a team there, it's based there, and today now, under understanding, we are now working hand in hand with our partner to develop cars in China. CBU says to young men, I think it's very clear, we get licensing, we get money up front, we develop uh, top hat with Lotus, uh, and that's why it's risk, uh, it's mitigating risk, we don't even invest a single cent, only our effort, and part supply, common part utilization, And this is our cars, familiar cars, the Gen 2 and the Persona, that is now rebatched and sold as a young man brand. Our engineers are there, they have four, four, four factories.